What is going on guys? This is Arctic Fox. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at a cold case. Today we will be looking into the disappearance of Cache Jacobs who went missing out of Richmond, Virginia. At the time of her disappearance, Cache was 21 years old. She would be 28 years old today. At the time that she went missing, Quiche was 5 foot 3 inches tall and weighed 100 pounds with brown eyes and brown hair. She was last seen in the 3100 block of East Broad in Church Hill near Chimborazo Park. She was last seen wearing black basketball shorts, pink and black Nike basketball shoes, and a pink scarf. She has tattoos on her right foot, her right leg, and right hand of a leaf, paws, and a flower, respectively. Her family has never given up hope on finding answers about what happened to Quiche, and today we're going to take a look into the circumstances surrounding her disappearance. At the time that she went missing, she was also wearing a Pandora bracelet with a Vegas charm and her fingernails were painted blue. So let's take a look at the circumstances leading up to Quiche's disappearance. Quiche was last seen, as I said, in the 3100 block of East Broad Street near the park in Richmond, Virginia on the 26th of September 2016. She had texted her mother, Tony Jacobs, saying that she was spending the night with a friend and that she would come home the next day. However, Quiche never returned home and has never been heard from again. After Quiche disappeared, Tony had some of her daughter's friends take her to the address where she had allegedly been dropped off on the night that she went missing. It was a house in Church Hill, in the Church Hill neighborhood of Richmond. The man who answered the door was named Otis L. Omar Tucker, and he told Tony that he knew nothing about Quiche's disappearance. His stories about her disappearance changed multiple times, however. He initially claimed that he had seen Quiche at around 5 p.m. on the day that she disappeared, but Quiche is known to have been at home at that time. Police searched that residence and didn't find any signs of Quiche. They did find what appeared to be bloodstains, however, but there wasn't enough blood to suggest anyone had died. This man has a history of violence towards women, and he once was arrested for attempted murder after choking another woman at the Church Hill residence, but that charge was later dismissed. He ended up moving to Florida after Quiche disappeared. In November of 2022, he was charged with murder and tampering with evidence in the death of Ashley Fowler, a Jacksonville, Florida woman who was murdered in his home with a hammer. He could have faced the death penalty for that charge. Quiche has been missing for far too long, and unfortunately, with the red flags surrounding this man, it doesn't lead to any good outcome, unfortunately. But Otis Tucker needs to step forward and give answers as to what happened to Quiche. Now, in May of 2023, he did plead guilty to second-degree murder and tampering with evidence in the Florida murder. He'll be sentenced, or he was sentenced, in July of 2023 to life in prison. And the prosecution wants him designated as a habitual felony offender. He's never been charged in Cachet's case, or named as a suspect. Which, I don't understand that. Given the fact that he had already been involved in an attempted murder, he's been charged and convicted of another murder, and now Cachet's missing and the last place that she was going to be was his house, why in God's name has this man never been listed as a suspect in her disappearance? Since Cachet's disappearance, she hasn't used her cell phone, bank card, email, or Facebook account which is very uncharacteristic of her. It's also uncharacteristic of her to leave without warning, and Tony believes, her mother believes, that at least one of her friends 
knows more about her disappearance than what has been disclosed. In early January of 2017, three and a half months after Kishé was last seen, her brother, Devon, was murdered. His murder is not believed to be connected to her disappearance. A suspect was connected in the brother's murder, although he claimed he acted in self-defense. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but his conviction was later overturned and he took a plea deal for a sentence of five years. Kishé never moved out of her mother's home after graduating from Richmond High School. She had worked several jobs while trying to decide what to do with her life, and she was very close to both her mother and her brother. Her mother believes that Kishé is alive and that she may have been trafficked out of state. Foul play is definitely suspected in Kishé's case, and we, we need to keep her face out there. And I'm glad that her mother has never given up the hope that Kishé is alive because I don't think any parent should ever give up that type of hope until there is documented proof that that's not the case. And we have certainly seen missing people come home after 40 or 50 years. So there is every chance that she may be out there somewhere and she may have been trafficked. God knows Virginia is a high trafficking area. So we need to keep Kishé's face out on social media, and if you have information on what happened to Kishé or her whereabouts, you can contact the Richmond Police Department at 804-646-5125, and you can remain anonymous. In the meantime, what I need everyone to do right now is to simply give this video a like. It does help more people to see Kishé's face. And the more people that see her, the better the chances are that we can find her and that we can bring answers for this family after all these years. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, consider clicking that subscribe button. It really does help the channel out. And if you ring that notification bell, you'll always be alerted whenever I post another missing persons video. But the most important thing that I need for every one of you to do right now is to simply click that share button, guys. Share this to your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, wherever you have social media. It only takes one second of your time to do, and it can make all the difference in the world in finally bringing answers for Kishé's family. As always, guys, I do want to thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Y'all be kind to one another out there, and let's bring answers for this family.